Welcome back, Pokey Peeps. We are moving on to the second part of making a badge, and that is to make the mold. The things you are going to need are your little template. This was our pre made kitty cat template, but you could also use things like a seashell, an egg corn. That's how easy making a mold is. The mold material we're using is this easy mold mold putty. It's a two part putty that when you mix, you have a couple minutes of work time and you will have a hardened mold at the end. Next, we need our resin. You do not need a box this big for um, the size that uh, gym badges we, we are making. I just use resin quite a bit, so I have the big box. And then these two things are optional. This is mica or mica powder. It's different colored powders you throw into the resin to give it a color. Or you have these dyes, resin dyes. Many different colors here. This would create kind of a translucent effect if you didn't want a solid color. And then some Sculpey gloss. This is what really will make your badge shine. Oh, and of course, you're going to need some sort of torch. This is to pop bubbles. You'll find when we are making the resin that there will be bubbles at the top. You're going to need to pop those with fire. I've tried like a hot air gun. I didn't have any luck. It's much easier with a torch. We have our template already here. We're going to break out the putty. You'll see that the putty has two different compounds. We got the one purple color. You got the white color. So what we are going to do is we are going to take a bit of the purple. Okay, and a bit of the white. And you want them to look as even as possible, but this is just eyeballing it. You don't need to weigh it or anything. The putty will be just fine. Okay, they look pretty even. Now, I've never had this putty, like, expire or so anything. Like, it, as long as you keep it sealed up, it should last for, like, ever. So now we have the two balls. You are going to mix them. Very thoroughly mix them. This is what starts a chemical reaction, which makes them start to harden. But you have a limited window of work time, which is about, like, four or five minutes. So you thoroughly mix the putty, and I roll it up. Uh, there's fingerprints and stuff, so I try to just smooth that out as nice as I can. Might feel some bubbles. Make sure to pop those. The bubbles can mess up your final product. Sometimes you can even eyeball them. Looks like I did pretty good here. I'm not really finding any bubbles. Oop, there was one. Okay, so that's pretty smooth down. I don't see the bubbles or any lines or scratches. You take the putty, you put it right over what you are making as your badge and just push down. Yep, push down each side. Make sure each side of the putty is now touching. You actually feel where there might be air pockets. So you're moving that around, move the pockets out the sides. Squishing it on the sides, making sure the putty is becoming very defined in there. Yep, I fell a bubble, so I'm pushing it down out of the way. Okay. Repeatedly pushing it down, making sure I'm getting every little feature. And when you are picking out your purple and white putty before mixing, if you think you don't have enough, just grab some more. You definitely want more than you think you would need. Okay, so that feels pretty good. I feel like we got all those minor details in there. We do have those eyes, the whiskers, the mouth, so that's why we're pushing it into it so much to make sure the putty is getting in there. Okay. So it doesn't look like much right now, 
but in about 20 to 30 minutes, this will be cured and it's gonna be soft and rubbery. And it'll be our gym bag mold. All right, it's been about 30 minutes. Let's see how our mold has turned out. Yep, nice and solid. Okay, looks like we got the definite shape. So then we gently just pull back on each side. And this is a solid piece of rubber now, so all you gotta do is push the bottom and boop, there's the template. It actually looks like it survived pretty well, so you could make multiple molds if you wanted. Yeah, and we got all the defining features that we made. We got all the lines in there. Yeah, that came out very good. Sweet. The next step would be now to use our mold. I'm putting the mold on a towel, not just so if there's any excess resin spilling off, it gets the towel, not the table, but also because it makes a nice even platform for the mold to sit. The brand of resin we are using is this Envirotex Light. I've been using it as the only resin I've ever actually really used. You mix it at one part to one part, just a 50-50 ratio. If you have something better to mix it with than a popsicle stick, I would recommend that. Popsicle sticks uh, are made of wood, of course, and the wood is aris, so aris, no, porous, which means it's full of air. So by using a popsicle stick, I'm actually um, putting bubbles in the resin, but it's easy to just throw away after you're done. When resin hardens, it becomes a hard plastic. So whatever the resin gets on, like it's there to stay. You're gonna need something to stir the resin with and two little Dixie cups. You might need bigger cups depending on how much resin you are working with and how many badges you're making at one time. But we're only making the one badge, so we're just gonna need the two cups. You could try with only one cup, but then you risk making a bad mix. You want them this resin to be very thoroughly mixed by pouring the pre-mixed resin into another cup, you're ensuring that the mix is absolutely perfect. I don't expect any of you to have a food scale. I use a food scale for resin making now. It ensures I'm doing a like perfect 50-50 mix, but you could also eyeball it and be pretty okay. You might mess up, and if you mess up, the final piece is actually going to be very bendy or squishy. So if you have a food scale, definitely use it, but you can probably get away without it. So there is our resin before mixing. I suggest stirring it up for at least a minute. A super thorough mix where you are scraping the sides, making sure that this resin is going to be mixed very well. The better the mix, the better the final product. All right, that was about a minute. We're gonna pour it into the new cup. Okay, so during the second mix, this is when you would want to add your colorant, something you want to color the resin with. I'm gonna try some mica powder. <laughs> this is just a fun little variety bag, just to try out different things. Ooh, what is that, rose gold? Ooh, Ooh we gonna try that. So when it comes to coloring resin, a little bit goes a long way. Resin is just naturally clear, so whatever you put into it, it's gonna just take over. That was just like a little pinch of the Mika powder. See? Not too much. And once again, you're gonna stir for about a minute. Okay, so uh, the rose gold kind of looks more bronzy now, but it's still pretty. I also brought out two little snow run charm molds I have previously made, because I think we're going to have enough resin to fill this up and more. So let's get the pouring. There we go. 
this little trip. Ooh, Ooh shiny. It's so weird, it totally looks rose gold in this little package, but it looks like bronze mixed in. Hmm. Oh, well, it's called Liberty Copper, so I guess that makes sense, huh? Alright, so we still have a little more, so I'm just gonna pour it into the Snow Runt charm here. Filled that a little bit, but that's okay. All right, those cups are now permanently fused. Yep, and all that little excess resin is actually going into the little charm holdy parts, so that's fine. You start to see the bubbles are forming on the top of this. That's why we have our little torch. Just a little inexpensive torch I picked up at Bed Bath & Beyond, but you can find these things at dollar stores anywhere. So the pop the bubbles, all you gotta do is that? Now they're popped. Easy as that. You might want to keep an eye on the project for another, I don't know, five, ten minutes or so, so all the bubbles have time to rise to the top. So our resin bubbles have now been popped. All we have to do is wait at the very least eight hours for this to cure. So make sure to put this somewhere that's not going to be moved around for eight hours. After eight hours, we're going to be able to pop these out of the molds and they're going to be a little malleable, a little squishy, but that's okay. A full cure doesn't happen until at least 24 hours later. That's when they'll be hard plastic, but they're workable after at least eight hours of curing. So see ya in eight hours. All right, Pokey Peeps, it has actually been over a day I've been away from this project, so they should be fully hardened at this point. It's very easy to get them out of the mold. You just pop them right out. The mold putty is very soft and malleable, so you can easily bend it however you want to get the molds out. And there's our first kitty badge in the making. Yeah, all the details came out really good. Well, yeah, I am pretty proud of it. Now that we can check out our Snorunt charms from that excess resin we had. Yep, I always love my boy Snorunt. Now your first resin badges are gonna come out what we call a little frosty. That's because there's still like bubbles on the inner surface. Uh, that always ends up being like just the first one. After the first one, they always come out a lot less frosty. But you'll see after we give this some Sculpey Gloss that this will really shine and have its features defined. But considering this video has now been over 10 minutes, I think I'm going to be saving the glossing for the part three. I'll also show you guys how to make them pins. And why not, I'll show off some of the previously won badges so maybe you guys can become inspired see you next time